Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a progressive lung disease that results in worsening shortness of breath. And unfortunately, we don't have uh, very good effective therapies uh, to prevent that from ultimately leading to a patient's death. So up until now, uh, there really have been no therapies that have been shown to be of any benefit to uh, slow or change the fibrotic uh, process other than lung transplantation. And the challenge with lung transplantation is that that is an option only for a select few patients who, who otherwise meet good criteria for transplant. This is actually a very exciting time for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. The most recent trials have demonstrated that there's a clear response in individuals who take either perfenidone or an intinitive compared to placebo. Now, unfortunately, these are not cures. These uh, don't cause uh, the lung uh, to turn around and become completely normal. Um, we're, we're, not, we're not there. Um, but what they do is they decrease uh, the declines that patients will experience in their breathing tests, uh, particularly over one year time. Both, both of these drugs were studied over a one year time frame. So we're hopeful uh, that the FDA will have a response uh, to the new drug applications uh, for both of these compounds, um, either the end of this year or maybe the first quarter of next year. We're, we're hopeful. So MUSC uh, for a long time has been one of the largest enrollers of uh, patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis into these novel therapeutic trials. So MUSC for years has established a, an excellent referral network within the region for patients with IPF. And the, the biggest benefit to that is that it allows us to offer novel therapies like profenadone and intentative, and both of which we were um, one of the largest enrollers, if not the largest enroller in those studies. The profenadone expanded access program is open right now, and the um, Nintentative program will be open soon. Um, so we do have access to these, uh, um, both of these drugs. Th these trials, they're for a limited time, and the goal of the trials is really to just get the drug out there before uh, FDA approval so that, so that we don't have to wait to get access to the drug, which we have demonstrated already works. And I think as we go into the future, the challenge, one of the challenges of having a medication that's approved uh, by the FDA um, is that those individuals will have access to that medication at, um, at, their, at the community level. I actually think that that's a great, that's a global good. We want as many people to take this medicine uh, who should be taking it as possible. But the disadvantage is um, that they may not be referred to a center like ours now. Um, and the challenge there is that this is, this is not a cure. These medications are, are a good start. Finally, we have medicines that look like that they have an effect, but they're not a cure. So what we really need to do is we need to get back in the lab. We need to look at different mechanisms from these medications and see if we can combine these medications with other interventions to actually have a much better response. So I believe uh, that the future and the reason why an individual should come to MUSC in another six months or another year um, if they're taking one of these medications, the advantage is that they can come here, um, we can potentially educate them better as to what's going on, and then we can also offer them to, an opportunity to participate in a combination therapy trial, which is uh, the future of this.